Boa tarde, galera. Tudo bem? Uh, alguns de vocês, a maioria, na verdade, acho que já voltaram às aulas, então já começou aí uma certa correria. Mas que bom que vocês tiveram tempo aí de aproveitar uh, esse mock class aqui com o professor Carl. Hoje o professor ele vai estar falando de engenharia mecânica, tá? É, espero que todos vocês tenham conseguido ali os materiais que vocês receberam, a lista de materiais que vocês tinham que ter, mas se não conseguiram, não se preocupem, vocês assistem o professor fazendo, tirem suas dúvidas, conversem hoje e depois a mesma coisa da segunda-feira. Façam na sua casa, tirem uma foto, façam um vídeo e depois manda para mim que eu encaminho para o professor e para a Camila, tá bom? Same drill de sempre... Uh, ligue, deixe o seu o microfone desligado, mas quando o professor falar com vocês, perguntar everything ok? Can we go ahead? Respondem yes, no, ok? Abre o microfone para conversar com o professor para interagir, tá bom? Espero que vocês se divirtam e tenham uma ótima aula. Thank you, professor. Thank you for one more day here. No problem at all, no problem at all. Right. Um, hello all again. Um, I'm not going to introduce myself because I think you already know me. Okay. So what we're going to do today, um, we're going to talk about the fascinating and or exciting and dynamic world of mechanical engineering, where I'm going to, it's going to follow the same sort of format as what we've been doing. So what I'll do, I'll explain what mechanical engineering actually is. Um, I will um, explain or give you some reasons why you should choose to study mechanical engineering and I'll give you a brief overview of some of the possible routes you may follow uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering and then at the end um, we will together build an elastic band powered car okay I'm sure you've all seen these before but Ours is going to be slightly different. Ours is going to have gears or a simulator gear. They're more like pulleys, to be honest. Um, so, unfortunately, though, before I carry on, um, the idea was for me to build it alongside you um, while you're using PVA glue. And I was going to be using one of these, uh, a glue gun. But unfortunately, when I plugged it in before, it blew up in my hands. So <laughs> I'm going to have to use PVA glue with you. So I'm not going to be able to test it at the end. But that's up to you to do. Okay, build it, test it, and then tell me what happens when you use the two different gears. Okay, see, and then we'll see if it actually agrees with the theory. Okay, right. So let me kick off again with a question. What is mechanical engineering? All right, uh, here we go. Mechanical engineering is again a massively, hugely broad discipline, um, more so than a lot of the others, um, which I'll explain a little bit further in a moment. Um, and it deals with the development of new machines, mechanisms, and also the improvement and modification of mechanical components, machines, and systems, okay? So as I've just explained to you, we're gonna be using pulleys. Um, if we just have two pulleys together, that's a machine or a system, okay? So simple machine, that is. Um, machines are, a, an, are an assembly of such components, as I've just shown you, designed to perform an action or actions, such as a mechanical, um, sorry, a manufacturing production line, where you'll have conveyor belts, um, you may have conveyor belts, you may have simple levers and that sort of thing. So um, this discipline is heavily based in the principles of physics and maths and how they apply to the designing of and development of machines, mechanics, fluid dynamics, and heat transfer amongst many, many, many others, again, which I'll explain a little bit more in, in, further along. As a mechanical engineer, you will play an integral part in the design and implementation of these systems and also the maintaining of such systems, all right? So why should you choose to study mechanical engineering as a discipline? Again, if you've seen these, um, if you've attended these classes before, the, these reasons are very, very similar to all other engineering disciplines with a slight difference with mechanical. Everything we use um, on a daily basis, an engineer or a mechanical engineer has been involved in its production. And this, well, this is more apparent with, um, uh, with mechanical engineers as they are integral 
not only to the designing of new products, but also in the manufacturing processes, as I've already explained, um, if not just if they're involved in the manufacturing production lines and also in the actual designing of the products themselves. For example, this mouse, a mechanical engineer has been integral in the design of that mouse. Okay, and that's everything that you you, you will actually use. Um, so um, this is why, sorry, mechanical engineers are in high demand, huge demand, with nearly all countries, again, showing a skills shortage in mechanical engineering. Um, and in many cases, all engineering disciplines, as I've already explained. And again, this basically means there is not enough mechanical engineers for the jobs available. Um, this is even more apparent with female engineers. Um, there are nowhere near enough female engineers. Okay, so we need more. It's my mission in life to get more female engineers. Okay, <clears throat> this means you're going to have an excellent chance of finding a job um, in mechanical engineering right out of university and in some cases even before you leave university. Again, I've already explained this with um, in, in our other classes. Um, a lot of um, my uh, my friends in university were all taken on before they even left and that's even um, true with myself um okay uh, mechanical engineers enjoy high starting salaries um it is i am um, all uh, all engineering um um jobs are which are very very high paying a lot more than many of the others okay and again this may not be your main reason um, but again, we need more money. Uh, we need money to live. Okay. So it's really, really important. Starting salaries for mechanical engineers are among the highest for any university degree. In fact, starting salaries for mechanical engineers is up to 30,000 pounds with a bachelor's degree, rising to 39,000 with a master's. And this is again, only a starting salary and this will increase substantially with experience and also with continued professional development, i.e. Um, you will never stop learning, okay? Um, while you're in the job, you will be learning new skills continuously and your money will, or your salary will increase with this continuous learning. Okay, um, this is a major, major point for mechanical engineers. Mechanical engineers are multi-skilled. Okay, mechanical engineers are often referred to as jack of all trades. This is due to the massively varied and diverse roles available within mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineers are integral to day-to-day -to -day to -day society and involved in both the designing of and manufacture of all products we use and also in food production amongst many, many others. Um, with the roles in mechanical engineering being incredibly varied and diverse, mechanical engineers have working knowledge of computer applications, electrical engineering, structural engineering, mathematics, and physics. In addition to this, mechanical engineers are required to have knowledge of social, environmental, and economic factors. So again, Massively diverse field, mechanical engineering, massively diverse. Um, for example, manufacturing production lines, I keep using this as an example, but it's ideal. They are not just mechanical in nature. They also have electrical components, electronic components, sensors, everything. And a mechanical engineer is needs to know all of these different, different aspects. So that's why they are a jack of all trades. Okay, global opportunities, again, the same as any other real uh, engineering discipline. Being a mechanical engineer pri provides a lot of opportunities for you locally and internationally. As mentioned, I mentioned previously, many countries are showing a significant skill shortage in, in the mechanical engineering. And therefore, there are many opportunities to live and work abroad. And again, some com companies may even require you to travel around. So you'll be seeing the world while you're getting paid well. Unfortunately, that's not the case at the moment, but it will improve in the future. We've just literally been talking about this. <laughs> okay, so mechanical engineering helps people. Again, everything we use on a daily basis, a mechanical engineer has been involved in its production at some stage. From the clothes we wear and the food we eat, 
to the cars we drive. Um, therefore, mechanical engineering is built on the idea of pr improving existing products, the development of new products, and the development and maintaining of production lines where products are manufactured. They, well, therefore, mechanical engineers are integral to day-to-day -day life and offer a massive benefit to society. Uh, mechanical engineers are at the forefront of future technologies. As mentioned pre previously, uh, well, continuously I've mentioned it, everything we use on a daily basis, a mechanical engineer has been involved in its production at some stage. And there are all, there's, uh, there, there, there are all, they are always looking to innovate, streamline, and improve products and processes. Due to this, mechanical engineering is at the forefront of, the, of developing new technologies for a number of industries, including but not limited to manufacturing, automotive, aerospace, and robotics. And these, with these advances in technology and computing power, the impossible is now becoming possible, uh, meaning it's a hugely exciting time to be a mechanical engineer. Okay, so what routes can you take um, in mechanical engineering. Um, studying mechanical engineering will provide you with a taste of the various skills and knowledge required to work in any of the sub-disciplines um, sub related to it or any of the roles related to it. However, if you know what route you would like to take within the main discipline, think about choosing to specialize early on and choose a degree that suits your desired path. But make sure you are sure about what you would like to do. If you're going to specialize, make sure you want to follow that route um, because you will be limiting yourself to that route, okay? If you're unsure, choose to study the main discipline. You will still be able to move down that route, okay? So of the next few slides, I'm going to introduce you to some, but certainly not all, of the sub-disciplines related to mechanical engineering. Manufacturing engineering, right, I've said manufacturing continuously through this. Man manufacturing engineering is focused on the design and optimization of small and large scale manufacturing processes. The goods um, produced by the manufacturing industry include all consumer items and industrial components from food, the food that we eat, as I've already explained, the chairs that we sit on, the la to laptops, TVs, the list is truly endless. And this means manufact a manufacturing engineer can enjoy a hugely varied and diver diverse and fulfilling career. As a manufacturing engineer, engineer, you will focus on development, optimization, and maintenance of large and small scale manufacturing and processes. You will be integral to the manufacturing process and will be responsible for all of the machines and even robots involved in the manufacturing process. Um, I'll just explain that for people who actually um, took the ro robotic class. You can specialize in robotics with man, um, mechanical engineering as well. Uh, but however, you will focus mainly on the mechanical elements. Okay. Um, typically, the role of a manufacturing engineer, a manu a, uh, manufacturing engineer, I'll speak properly now. Typically, the role of a manufacturing engineer is in the managing or supervising both of both the production processes and maintaining of the equipment. However, a manufacturing engineer will also be involved in quality control, as this is a major indicator to a fault in the production line accuracy. Um, the manufacturing engineer will also be responsible for the production of standard oper operating procedures or SOPs or instruction manuals for operatives to follow. Automotive engineering. As the name suggests, automotive engineering is solely dedicated to the vehicle manufacturing industry. Due to um, a huge focus on environmental and safety concerns, automotive engineers must produce vehicles that are safe and have the least impact on the environment. But this must, must be coupled with keeping the costs down to a minimum as to ensure they are economical and affordable to buy. For example of this, it's pointless um, putting, um, making cars that are um, 
massively safe and environmentally sound if they cost too much to buy because um, nobody would actually buy them because they cost too much. There you go. So automotive engineers are taught the skills and expertise to ensure that, it is, that this is all possible and to consider the future direction or trends of the automotive industry, which are changing rapidly in today's climate. With this training and skills, automotive engineers are able to design components, manage the vehicle production process, or be involved in the testing processes. Uh, surprisingly, automotive engineers, specifically those with advanced driving skills, are also commonly used to test drive new vehicles or new vehicle designs for research and development purposes. Um, and to ensure the vehicle functions as it should. The reason for this is, as an automotive engineer, they have a deep understanding of every element or component and therefore are in the best position to identify even the smallest fault with an unskilled, which an unskilled driver or a driver without any mechanical skills uh, would miss and can give uh, and they can give input on how the fault can be fixed which again an unskilled driver an unskilled driver wouldn't okay aerospace engineering um aerospace engineering advances the technology and designs of aircraft and space vehicles what are, what are the industries to get into? I'd love to move into this industry. Aerospace engineering includes all developments within, within and outside of Earth's atmosphere. And this is the main difference to aeronautical engineering. Aeronautical engineering is essentially a sub-discipline of aerospace engineering. Um, but they mainly, um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so aeronautical engineering, whose main focus is in the design, development and maintaining of both civil and military aircraft so within the earth's atmosphere aerospace engineering is again a hugely varied and diverse discipline where aerospace engineers can specialize in the design and development of a number of vehicles including but certainly certainly not limited to rockets missiles space stations and yes even even airplanes okay the design and simulation of these advanced vehicles and systems is an essential part of the process and there's a common application in aerospace engineering and uh, the engineer does not essentially the engineer does not want the vehicle or components or system to fail while it's orbiting five miles up because it'd be nigh on impossible to fix okay due to this graduates of this discipline are extensively trained um, to use numerous software packages to facilitate in-depth simulation okay right Okay, now on to the interactive demo. Right, again, we're going to use, um, oh, we're not going to use our friend Tinkercad. Um, um, again, we're going to actually make an elastic band powered car with a difference. Our car is actually going to have a gearing system. Um, they're not actually gears, they're actually made, gears have teeth, pulleys don't. Okay, so that's the difference. But we're going to just pretend that these are gears at the minute. Okay, um, right, I'm going to stop sharing uh, my screen now so you can see me in full. You should be able to see me in full anyway. Okay, so um, is everybody ready? Are we all ready to move on? Sorry, Crow, I think we are yeah. not seeing your screen. We are. You're not, you're not seeing my screen? I, I don't think so. Can you see my camera? Can you see my camera? Yeah, yeah, we're we're only seeing your camera. On your camera. Yes, that's not a problem. We just see out and see my camera. Sorry, um, yeah. I've stopped sharing this, uh, the 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 um, screen, so my picture should be bigger. Oh, uh, okay, okay, sorry. It should be anyway, um, but it's not. No, no, okay. no, it, it's working. It's working. Sorry. It's working. Okay. My bad. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing, um, again, we're going to be making an elastic band powered car. I know I was late sending over the equipment list or the materials list. So don't worry about it too much. Okay. I will actually just demonstrate how to make it. And again, um, I was actually going to make it and test it, but this blew up in my hands. So um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to actually show you it working. 
all right but this is up to you to do i want to see videos from you of it working and i want you i'm not going to actually say what it's actually how it's going to react okay um to different gears i want you to tell me what the gears do right okay so the first thing that we're going to do um you should have let me just work out how many of these we've got you should have eight eight um eight round pieces of cardboard um at set at 100 uh, millimeters um diameter okay i've already glued these together so with them eight um we're going to make four wheels out of them eight just like them okay i've already poked the holes in them as well so don't worry about that um i've actually lost one where is it yeah okay right and then what we're going to do we're going to make the gears or the pulleys right so i'll make these with you hopefully you can see that and again don't take any notes of my dirty desk right so the first gears we're going to put together what are they? Yeah, then. the first gears we're going to put together we're going to put the small gears together so these are the um 30 diameter 30 millimeters in diameter gear uh, pulleys okay so you should have two of them right and then you'll have four uh, around about 35 millimeters so all this uh, the reason we've got four to 35 millimeters the wrong ones. just one second there we go there and i've glued them together brilliant okay not to worry right just one second i've got myself in a little bit of a tiz i've lost um i've got myself all mixed up Right, okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to glue these together. Okay, so we'll start we'll start with the big gears because I don't know what I've done with the little gear stuff. There we go. There's three of them. There's four of them. Okay, one second. Here we go. <laughs> I'm all fingers and thumbs today. There we go. Right. Okay, so we'll start putting the bigger gears together. Something's gone wrong here. I'm, I'm actually looking for something, and it's in my hand, which isn't um, which isn't good, is it? Right. So we put the bigger the gears together. So you'll have these, which were. Let me just double check the sizes on them. It's actually on here. Okay. So for the bigger gear. You will have 60 mil diameter um, pieces of cardboard, just like that. And then you will have a four 70 mil diameter um, piece of cardboard like that. Let me just open the zoom back up again so you can see me. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to glue these together. Okay. So on the smaller part of the gear, which is this bit, okay, the 60 millimeter, um, just... Plenty of glue. One side, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. These um these are uh, much harder than using the Tinkercad um, because I'm actually demonstrating while I'm trying to talk, which isn't good. Okay, so we've glued that side. You've got your bigger pulley, which basically just stops the elastic band from falling off. What we want to do, we want to put that directly in the center don't worry about it if it's not perfect because we can we can get around that okay just as long as this center circle is near enough round it shouldn't really matter okay so that's one side glued on the next side again just on the smaller just leather that with a load of pva and as you can see I couldn't find a paintbrush earlier on because we we're going to use a, um, a glue gun. So I've nicked my daughter's eyelash uh, eyebrow um, pencil, which is an, she's not going to be happy about when she finds out. There we go. And then we're just going to sandwich that together. Again, try and keep it nice and centered. There we go. And that's our first large gear or large pulley. Okay. And then we're going to repeat that step for the next one. Just like that, and again, plant it straight in the middle of that. There, like that. So you go. So 
Let's plant that straight in the middle of that. And again, we're going to do this on the outside of this one. And then we're going to sandwich that between them two, just like that. There we go. Is everyone okay with that? Are we all um, are we all following along? Or if you're not following along, are you getting are you getting it? So you can actually repeat it yourselves. Everyone okay? Okay. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay. So. I'm going to do a bit of, you may not be familiar with Blue Peter, but I'm going to do Blue Peter. Here's two I made earlier. Okay, and now what we're going to do, we're going to repeat that stage for the smaller gears. Okay, so you're going to have your 30 mil diameter, um, small 30 mil diameters, and then you're going to have four at 35 mil, just like them. And again, we're just going to repeat this process. Oh, I've got glue everywhere. And then again, small, plenty of glue on there. And we're going to plant that directly in the center. Put a little bit too much glue on that one. And again, same on the other side. Just going to sandwich them together. So there's a small gear, and then we're going to repeat that step for the next. So we're going to have two small gears and two large gears, okay? Um, you'll see why we've got that in a second. Okay. And there we go. So there's our gears. And again, here's two I made earlier, so the dry. Right. So the next stage is we're going to start working... Um, so we've already glued our wheels together, remember? So the next stage is we're going, to use, we're going to basically build the body of the car, okay? So when I sent um, the, um, the PDF through yesterday, um, I told you to um, cut four slots in, in each corner, okay? Um, the same size as the smaller T-pieces, okay? Um, you will notice that there's three more slots here. Okay, so what this is going to do, these are going to do, these are going to hold, this, so this side is going to hold, um, this way you're going to wrap the elastic band around, and this side here, so essentially using the bigger pieces, like this. Okay. Like that. So the reason I never told you to actually um, cut these bits um, just yet, what we've got to do first is I'll find my gears. We go. Just we go. Let's just get this elastic band off that. Okay. What we've got to do, we've got to make sure. Hopefully, you can see this. These are going to be positioned. So the elastic band is actually in tension, okay? So the large gear, hopefully you can see that. Can you all see that? Is everyone okay? Can you see that? Yeah, now it's more clear, Carl. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so essentially, this is going to be on the axle. This gear is going to be on the axle, just like that, okay? Which will basically sit under there. So we need to cut these bigger slots so the elastic band is in tension, okay? Just like that. All right, this is going to be different um, depending on the size of your elastic band. So just make sure that it's actually um, under tension when you're using it. If it's not under tension, it will not spin when it's supposed to spin. Okay, so what we'll do, first of all, let me just on the wheels so what we're going to do first we're going to set up the axles okay so this is going to be your rear axle okay so first of all we're going to poke a hole through your wheel through your wheels let me use one of these so you can actually see it so you should have a center mark from where you've actually um, drawn the wheels using your compass okay so uh, you can use just a sharpened pencil. I've got to got a utensil for it. So first of all, just push through. So you've got a hole all the way through it. 
and then using your scissors just push in and just expand the hole out just like that watch your fingers watch your fingers yes yes watch your fingers so just expand it out just like that just so your pencil remember this is going to be a wheel so your pencil needs to be really really tight in there just like that okay so again i've met, i've already prepared this earlier just like that and then with your smaller your smaller t pieces like this these get pushed through each corner And these are going to hold your axles. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so you push them. You push these three through. This is going to hold your... These three are going to hold the actual drive... The drive train, they call it, or the drive system. And then these four, these four are going to actually hold your wheels. Okay, so first... We just poke your axle through, just like that. You will get a recording. Uh, hopefully, you'll get a recording of this, so you'll be able to just follow along um, because I know some of you might not have the equipment there. Okay. Then what we're going to do, we're going to put the large gear on. Is that the right one? Yeah. Just like that. And then the smaller gear as well. So you're going to have two gears on the rear axle. Just like that. And then just, just move that back slightly. And then we just push that through. Just like that. It's a little bit stiff, but that's what we want. There we go. Okay. And then once we've done that, we just put the other gear or the other wheel just on the other side, like that. All the while, we're going to be gluing these pieces together, okay? So once it's actually in there, if we just pop a little good bit of glue on the outside, just around the pen, so just push it on slightly more, just like that. Put a load of glue around the pencil itself, just like that. And then pull the wheel back to the edge. And that should, there we go, just like that. And then again, we'll repeat that for the other side. It actually looks really impressive when it's done. There we go. That's like that. Okay, so there's your rear axle or your drive train. Okay, we're going to repeat that step for, let's make sure I've used the right pencil, yep. Yeah. For the front axle. So we just pop this one on first. Just like that. Loads of glue, plenty of glue on the pencil. And then we just push that further on. And that should just stick together. And then we'll push that front axle through there. And then through the other side, just like that. And then we'll pop the other wheel on the other side. And again, make sure you glue that up. Just like that, and then just push it through. There you go. Okay. So we're getting there. Um, also, once um, once the axles are all in place, just glue the um, glue your T pieces up or the small T pieces up as well, um, just to make sure that they don't push out on you, because they will push out if you push down on it. So just glue them up, and then just fold that flat part over, and then hold it until I won't hold until the glue's gone off. But essentially, that's what you need to do. Make sure that they're glued in place. Same with the front. Just like that. 
Um, do not glue the um, the bigger ones, the bigger T pieces in place until everything is actually on. Um, everything's already connected up to it, otherwise it won't work. Okay. For some reason it's bouncing. I don't know why. Okay. So we started off with our car. We're nearly enough there. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to add our top gears or, or the gears to the actual drivetrain itself. So if I find, where's my bigger gear? Ah, there it is. Okay. So as you can see, we've got a small gear here now and we've got a larger gear here. All right, so what we're going to do on this, on the, um, on the drive axle itself, or the drivetrain itself, um, we're going to have the opposite. So on the drivetrain, on the rear axle, you've got a large gear. So to meet that, you're going to use a small gear. And then for the smaller one, you're going to meet that with the larger gear. Just like that, okay? And then again, just pop that one out for a second. We just pop that through there. Oh, let me stop there a second. We forgot a merely important point. Um, the pin that I said try and get hold of. I've just lost mine down the gap in my desk. Brilliant. Okay, this pin. Okay, if you can see it, this is what's going to be used to actually catch the. Um, the elastic band, so it's actually going to hoop the elastic band like that for you to spin it around. Um, again, be massively careful with this part, okay? So what you're going to do, you're just going to push it into the pencil, just so it's stuck, and then just push down. If you can see that, push down on the pencil, on the pin, and it should just push right through the pencil, just like that. Is everyone okay? Are we all, um, are we all following along? Okay, okay. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Okay. So just like that. Again, just be very, very careful. And don't um you've just seen the way I've just pushed it down like that. If you do that, um make sure you've got something underneath it. Okay. Don't um don't um wreck your desk. All right. Mine's already wrecked, so I'm not really that bothered. Right. I've made a mistake. So what we're going to do, you've got the pin there, right? So you've got your first big piece. Um, just poke that one out. So you're just going to have the center or the, um, the second one in here. That's going to be the only one up. We'll push that on just like that. Push that through. We'll bring the other one up just like that. And then that should push through there. Yeah. Okay, just like that. Then we'll put our gears on. So we need the larger gear first, which goes onto the smaller gear here. I'll find the elastic band before I do that. Just like that. So that's gonna meet the smaller gear. You've got the smaller gear, the small gear on the drivetrain, which is going to meet the larger gear on the axle. Just like that. And I wonder if anyone can see the deliberate mistake that I've made. Anybody? Alguém conseguiu enxergar aí o erro que o professor está falando? I've uh... I forgot to actually hook the elastic band over here. So what I'll do, I'll just whip that off a second. Gente, enquanto o professor está arrumando ali, porque ele esqueceu de colocar o elástico para aquela roda com a outra, está todo mundo acompanhando, vocês estão fazendo junto com o professor, vocês estão fazendo anotações. Conta um pouquinho para a gente como que está sendo. We're nearly there. Don't forget Eu to do that. I'm doing some notes here, preparing. 
Tá legal, bacana. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm j I just ask them uh, if they are building the car with you or they are just taking notes and they're going to build later. Yeah. And Leonardo just said here he's taking some notes that he's going to try uh, later. Yes, that's it. I think uh, I think that would be the better option, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because it is quite fiddly. And um, it will take it will take a little bit, as you can see. I'm having a little bit of a pig with it at the minute. There we go. And for some reason, it's just not pushing through. For some reason, the axle's not moving through. There we go. Lovely. Okay. Now we'll pop our wheel back on because we're going to pretend that that didn't happen. Okay. It's me rushing. Right. Okay. So as you can see now, it's ma mainly in place now. Right. So we've got basically all of it in place. Right. And as you can see, if I just hook these gears up now, hook our pulleys up like that. Just like that. As you can see, if I spin that now, it's fairly tight for some reason. I don't know why. one second this is where this slot that you cut in you may have to move this around a little bit just so the gears doesn't doesn't rub there we go that's better there we go you wouldn't believe that i've actually built this about 15 times there we go so as you can see as the axle turns or the power train turns you will see that the bigger wheel or the bigger cog, um, that turns also, like that, right? So what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to actually start explaining how um, the gearing system works. If I can find my pencil. Let me just find my pencil. Brilliant, I've lost my pencil. One second, here we go. So, if you have a look at this gear in front of me now, you've got a small spot here, and you've got another one here, okay? When I spin that round, are, them, are both of them spots moving at the same speed? This is a question. Are them, both of them spots moving at the same speed, or is one moving faster than the other one? Anybody? Anyone? Oh, thank you, professor. Yes. I don't know if it's right, but I think that the the bigger will get a bigger time to make a complete. Uh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I forget the word. But both. Well, you're very very close. Both of them are moving um, in the same time. Okay. But this one here, this one here is moving a large, a greater distance than this one in the same amount of time, okay? So in reality, the top mark here is actually moving faster than this one here, okay? So if we move, say for instance, we take that center away, for example, here, every time we turn this smaller one, it's only moving the bigger cog or the bigger gear um half the a half a rotation so the smaller gear is moving one full rotation but the the larger gear is moving um half a rotation because this is the half half of the circumference of this one okay so when you do it the opposite way round so say for instance we move this band over to this side like that okay and then you've got the larger gear is actually driving the smaller gear. When you move that larger gear round, the smaller gear is moving at twice the speed. Okay? So, from one revolution of the actual gear of the motor itself, the actual axle is moving um, two rotations. So, that's really good, isn't it? Would you say? Would you say that was really, really good? 
So, you know, you only have to move the engine, uh, the engine only has to move in one revolution to move the back the back axle in two revolutions. Would you say that with that? Why would we do, would we not do that with everything? Would you say that was, if that was the case, would we do that with everything? Yeah, everything. yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. No, unfortunately not. Okay, so... What you need to actually look at, I've, have you all um, in physics, have you have ever heard of a moment? In physics, a moment. I think yes, but I don't remember at all. No problem at all. Okay, so a moment, essentially, is it's actually a moment of inertia. Okay, so if you think about, um, think about when you drive a car, or, you know, you've seen people driving cars. When they pull away, they put the car into first gear. Sorry, you can't see me. They put the car into first gear, okay? And the car will drive away. So, for example, if you think about this one here um, as being first gear, and think about this one here as being the fifth gear, right? So, to move away, we use the smaller gear. And when we start moving, uh, when we're moving forward, we move the fifth gear, we move into fifth gear. Why do you think that is? And think about the moment, think about the moment of inertia. Why do you think we do that? We use it to go fast. I, it's, it's an economic way to move around. I, I don't know how to explain. Well, if you try, Put this, uh, put, if we put this in this, um, this way, if we try, say for instance, we get in the car, we, move, um, we don't move anywhere, we haven't, we haven't moved off anywhere, we just put the car into fifth gear and try to drive away, what do you think would happen? What do you think would happen? Well, I know it's not going to work, but <laughs> I don't know how it's not going it, to work. It would stall the motor. And the reason it would stall the motor is because the smaller gear has got a lower moment than the bigger gear, okay? So the smaller gear has got um, a lower moment of inertia, which means it takes less force to turn the smaller gear than it does the bigger gear, okay? And that is the entire principle of mechanical um, assistance. Okay, so with pulleys, so for example, Professor, yes, this is magic. <laughs> Thank you. It looks really impressive, doesn't it? It's really good when it actually moves. Um, so that's the reason why we use gears, and that's, that's the reason um, um, this is what mechan a mechanical aid is. Okay, um, so if I had a big gear over this side and I wanted to lift um, something really, really heavy, if I put a smaller pulley on, um, on my side, which I'm going to turn the smaller pulley, yes, I'll be moving that pulley twice to only move this bigger pulley once, but it will be lighter because it takes less force or the mo moment of inertia is less on the smaller wheel. Does that make sense? Did that make sense? Yes, yes, it really makes sense. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. So that's why we use gears. So if you think about your car, if you try to drive away um, in, uh, in the highest gear, your car weighs, like, um, say, for instance, between one and two tons, if you want to, for argument's sake, um, and it will not move away. But as soon as you gear down and use the smaller gears, um, the car will move away, but it won't move as fast because it's moving the other gear slower. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. It's, and that's, it's really magic. <laughs> and that's, that's why we use it. Okay. So, right, we've got to this stage now. So now all that's in, we can now glue the bigger pieces into place. That, again, I've got glue everywhere. These you need to make sure that your T pieces are really, really tight or nice and tight, just until um, I shouldn't really have the elastic band on here now um, because it's moving it before it's actually fixed. But I wanted to show you how it worked. Okay, so straighten that back up again. Straighten that back up again. Okay, and we glue these in place, 
I'm really, I'm, I'm really, really annoyed that my glue guns blew up. I would like to have shown you how this worked. Okay. So if I find the elastic band, okay. So we've used a nice little thin elastic band for the gears because it doesn't need to be really that strong. All right. So what we're going to do um, for the drive, we're going to use a nice thick, strong elastic band. Okay. So what we're going to do, this elastic band needs to be in tension. Okay. So when you're actually setting it up, even without hooking it onto there, it needs to be in tension, okay? If it's not in tension, if it's quite loose like that, as soon as you get to the end, it'll just it'll just ravel up, it'll just unravel, okay? So it needs to be in tension. So what we'll do... Sorry, Carl, can you just put your camera a little bit down? Yeah, sorry. I'll... No, that's okay. Thank you. There we go. Right, so as you can see, the pin that we've used here, all right, that is what's going to be used to actually catch the elastic band. So we just hooked that on there now, again, because I'm not using the glue gun, it's move, all moving out of place for me, which is fantastic. So we know that's under tension now or under some sort of tension. Like that. So I can see that the hole needs to be around about here. So if I just poke the hole in there, again, just watch your fingers when you're doing this bit. And I'll just pull that elastic band through. So we're just going to push this through here now. Professor, Joey, before you, yeah? you you conclude this, um, for example, do you, do you remember? I don't think they'd remember, but when yeah. I was a, a kid. Yeah. Um, do you know the toys cars that you can pull back and then when you relief they go by themselves that's it that's these what, what, what is this how, how it can work like this it's essentially that's essentially an elastic band power car oh really uh, yeah yeah um they've got an, an elastic well some sort of elastic in there it won't be an elastic band and then you pull them back it winds it basically winds it up I, i'll show you that now Okay. Um, it w winds it up. You just push this through. It can be a bit of a pain getting the elastic bands through, but don't worry about it too much. Because I always try to figure out, and one day I try to open one car to see how it yeah. works. But I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't find anything. <laughs> that, was, that was usually my trick. I used to take everything apart. <laughs> everything. Um, yeah. My mom hated it. Everything she'd buy me, I'd have, I'd have a part. Um, so I was an engineer even back then. Right, and then we're going to push it back through the second hole, just like this. Yes, yeah, so that elastic band, uh, the, the friction cars, they call them. Yeah, selection car, yeah. Yeah, friction cars. Essentially, they work in the exact same way as this. They've got some sort of elastic, um, it won't be an elastic band, but they'll have some sort of um, elastic in there that would... Um, Basically, it's called, um, it gains potential energy. So as you pull it back, it stretches the elastic, which gains potential energy. And as you release it, it transforms into kinetic energy. And that's a major law that you will actually come across in mechanical engineering. It's called the law of energy conservation. Okay, so remember this, you'll, you'll sound really, really clever on this one. Um, so the law of energy conservation essentially states energy cannot be transformed or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another, okay? So if you think about it, potential energy transforms into kinetic energy. Um, uh, if you uh, rub your hand over your finger on your palm like that, um, what's generated? Heat's generated and noise is generated. So the energy is transformed from um, my kinetic energy of actually rubbing into friction, which generates heat. And there you go. So there's the law of energy conservation. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, has anyone here on grade 12? Uh, what I mean is, Tercero Ano de Ensino Médio? No? Segundo Ano? I I am. Ok, segundo ano, Helena e Leonardo. Vocês já, vocês escuta, vocês já escutaram essa, essa lei da conservação na escola? Yeah, sim, sim, sim. Yes. Já, já, bastante. Bastante, né? 
Yeah, I just I, asked then, Professor, if they have heard on the school. They should have, yes. Uh, yeah. They may have, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's when, um, when they start looking into forces, Newton's second laws, and that sort of thing. Um, so, again, because it's all still wet, it's not working properly. Um, but when, you've, uh, when you do it yourselves at home, just make sure everything is dry before you do this. Um, because as you can see, it's just trying to pull itself to pieces at the minute. So if I just give it a go, let's see if it, let's see if we can get it to spin. For those people who doesn't have enough patience to wait, do can it can they take like a a hairdresser to help to dry quickly or not? Uh, hair dryer, yes, 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 of course yeah. you can, yes. Okay. Um, as you can see, because it's all stuck together, <laughs> nightmare. I can't believe it. Oh, it worked. And there we go. Hang on. Right, hang on. So it'll only work very, very quickly, okay? Oh, come on, come on, come on. But as you can see, that's the bigger gear, isn't it? Okay, can you see how much it's struggling yes. moving the bigger gear? Okay, so let's move that over to the smaller gear. Let's see what happens. Professor. Yes. Look like gears. What's that? Look like gears. The, that's exactly it. That's exactly what, well, it's what they're supposed to look like. Um, they're actually pulleys, these. Um, what you usually have um, with the gears, gears usually have teeth and they fit into the, in together like that. So that's a gear. This is actually a pulley, but they work in exactly the same way. Okay. Right, let's see if, let's see if I can actually get this to work um, with all the glue still wet. There we go. So let's wind this up now. It's going to pull itself to pieces. Right. And let's see how fast this spins now. See how fast it spins? It's actually got hold of it. So with the bigger, with the bigger, with the bigger gear, it struggled to move it. But now we've got the smaller gear on there. It should just move nice and right. Can you all see that? Yeah. Um, obviously, again, because the glue is still wet, it's not going to spin properly. But if I let go now, so <laughs> really, really quick. So you can see that it spins really easily. If I put it onto the bigger gear again. There we go. I'm really, 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 really disappointed that my glue gun blew up. It's, it's really good, this as well. You know, it's something, um, it's something I would play with for hours. Okay, so let's move this now. And we'll see. And you see the bigger gear? It doesn't move at all. As you can see. So it'll need a little bit of a help to actually get it moving. So there you go. It will actually move properly if, um, if the glue is dry. As you can see, everything's all bent. Basically because everything's not glued up properly. So. And there we go. Okay. So again, it looks massively impressive. Um, what I would like you to do is when you've put it all together and obviously let the glue dry, otherwise it won't work properly, okay? So once you've put it all together, experiment with different size gears and see what you can actually do with the different size gears and see if... So, for example, um, use two small gears instead of just um, a small and a big gear. The reason I've done it this way is to give you the... Um, it's the total opposite. Okay, so it's from one extreme to another, if you know what I mean. So with this one, with this one, it really struggles to move. But if you put it onto the smaller, it will move forward, but it will not move as fast. Okay, there we go. Um, is everyone okay with that? Um, I, again, I'm really sorry that I couldn't get it moving. But again, technical issues, we all have them. Is everyone okay? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Is that all right? So, um, you will be, hey, um, Diego, will you um, be able to pass them a copy of this recording? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, just remember all the, the mock class so far that we have been had with uh, Professor Crow. You guys are going to have access to, to that. And for the further mock class that we are planning for My Way program as well. So, don't worry at all. Excellent, excellent. So there you go. Uh, have, has anyone got any questions? Any questions about either the car or anything else? Professor, 
Can we use the elastic band on the two polyas? Like, what happens if, you, if we do this? It, it, on, it, so if we put the elastic band on this and wrap it around that? So, for um, example, if you put the pin in here and then you wrap the elastic band around there, is that what you mean? I cannot see the... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. So, you mean if you wrap the elastic band around this? Yeah. In, um, in this and in the other two. Yes. Um, well, you could. Um, but unfortunately, because we're only using cardboard, um, when you put any sort of pressure on that, i.e., um, so you wrap an elastic band on the tension around it, it would just crush the cardboard. But... If you want to go that little bit further and build it out of um, out of wood, that would work as well, and you would be able to do that. Um, but you wouldn't have the effect of the gears; the gears would not work with it. Um, essentially, all you would do is just spin that uh, spin that gear only. Okay, so you wouldn't get the effect of using two gears on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. But again, when you build it, I me just spinning this. With my with my hands, I can actually feel the difference in the force needed, or sorry, not the force, the inertia, uh, the moments of inertia needed to actually turn it. I can feel the difference just with my fingers, um, just working with my fingers. So um, it does work, and hopefully you will get it working properly, better than I did in this short amount of time. Um, so, any other questions? Anyone? I think they are trying to figure out how this magic happens, even though you explained. <laughs> they don't believe. <really. laughs> <laughs> but again, um, you know, we've all we've all seen elastic band powered cars before. But I thought we're going to take it that little bit further. Why not? And then I can explain something really, really, um, really interesting to you, which is basically gears and pulleys. Um, I love them. I love them. Um, really, really interesting. Um, so, um, again, right, okay, and this is our last class, isn't it? Um, so, I'm really disappointed, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed every one of these. Um, so, um, again, I'm available, I'm here. Um, so, if you need any help in the future with anything, um, you all know my email address by now. If you need anything from me, if you need any, any help with anything, please let me know. If you are putting this car together and you need any help with that, again, just let me know. Um, and I'm here to help, okay? So, thank you all again. Thank you, teacher. I, I would like to really... I'm really happy with, the, with this class. You really helped me with the choice of the engineer. Perfect profession. <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> brilliant, excellent. Um, Camilla, um, do you would you like to talk a bit, a, a little bit about our um, ISCs in Holland? Yeah. So okay. I would just speak in Portuguese because it's easier. Yeah. No problem. Uh, pessoal, então, é, para os que estiveram aqui na, na primeira aula que a gente fez, né, já três semanas atrás, é, eu sou a Camila. Eu trabalho na Study Group. A gente é uma empresa que representa 45 universidades que estão espalhadas nos Estados Unidos, no Canadá, no Reino Unido, na Holanda, na Irlanda, na Austrália e na Nova Zelândia. E a gente, junto com a EFIG, faz esse processo de admissão dos estudantes nas universidades. Então, a gente tenta facilitar o máximo uh, esse processo de admissão para vocês nas universidades do exterior. É, Puxando aí o que o professor falou de engenharia mecânica hoje, para vocês que têm interesse nessa área, a gente tem uma opção de universidade que é muito bacana na Holanda. Então, ela chama Hans. É, eu vou passar as informações, o Diego também tem essas informações que a gente consegue mandar isso para vocês por e-mail, mas para vocês saberem, né? Ela fica em Groningen, na, na Holanda. Então, ela está no norte da Holanda, de Amsterdã, né, da Holanda. É, ele está mais perto da Alemanha do que está necessariamente de Amsterdã. Então, o que, que é bacana? Para vocês que têm interesse nessa parte de engenharia mecânica, de trabalhar com carros, é, os, a universidade ajuda vocês em processo de estágio, e processo de estágio não só na Holanda, mas também na Alemanha, que tem algumas marcas que vocês devem conhecer, como Volkswagen, a Audi. Então, vocês podem fazer o processo de estágio 
e serem colocados, né, porque aí depende de uma entrevista, mas vocês podem ser colocados numa empresa como a Volkswagen para fazer o estágio de vocês enquanto vocês estiverem na universidade. Então, isso é bem bacana porque abre muitas portas quando vocês estiverem lá também e para vocês, depois da universidade, começarem a trabalhar. É, e o legal da Holanda também é que o custo-benefício é muito bom. Então, é, a gente sabe, vocês devem estar acompanhando também a questão do dólar, o dólar está subindo, é, a, o euro ele é um valor um pouco mais alto que o dólar, mas o preço da universidade na Holanda é mais baixo. Então, para vocês terem uma noção, falando assim por cima, né? e aí o Diego consegue mandar essas informações para vocês depois, é, o ano dessa universidade custa 7.700 euros. Então, é, se dividir pelo, por 12 meses, que é o que a gente paga aqui no Brasil, vocês vão pagar a mesma coisa, dependendo da universidade aqui no Brasil, mas para fazer uma graduação de qualidade de ensino, às vezes muito superior com as que vocês achariam aqui no Brasil. Então, eu vou passar algumas informações para o Diego, para ele conseguir encaminhar para vocês também, mas fiquem com isso na cabeça. Se vocês estão pensando na universidade fora, né? conversa com o Diego. O Diego já consegue passar algumas alternativas para vocês, porque vocês aí, alguns falaram que já estão no segundo ano, né? Essa é a hora de vocês começarem a se programar e fazer todo o processo de application com calma, tá? Camila, e lembrando que as universidades na Holanda, os cursos são todos em inglês, né? Todos em inglês, então não precisa, não precisa falar o holandês, é, tudo acontece em inglês e também na Holanda vocês podem trabalhar durante o programa de vocês. Então, além do estágio que vocês podem fazer, vocês podem trabalhar no dia a dia de vocês também. Então, isso também já abre algumas portas para vocês quando vocês estiverem lá. É, não sei se alguém aqui tem, mas se alguém tiver passaporte europeu, é, isso também tem vantagens para quem quer estudar na Holanda. É, o ano acadêmico, para quem tem passaporte europeu, custa 2.143 euros. Então, é, é uma vantagem muito grande em relação a... A quem tem passaporte europeu, porque taxa, paga a taxa de alunos locais. Eu mandei aí no chat, vocês devem estar vendo, tem o meu e-mail também. Se vocês tiverem qualquer dúvida em relação ao processo seletivo ou alguma universidade, pode conversar com o Diego, pode conversar comigo também. A gente vai, ajuda vocês ne, nesse processo e separa uma lista de universidades para vocês conseguirem pesquisar também é, a questão de ranking e do, e do curso que vocês querem fazer. Muito bacana. Então, tá vendo, galera? Todo o que vocês tiveram contato aqui com o professor Kroll uh, dentro das mock classes do programa do My Way, é... eu acho que é uma, uma grande oportunidade que vocês têm aí. E já vi muitos alunos construindo a ponte de palito, esse carrinho, quem está querendo fazer engenharia mecânica, isso é fundamental para o pro portfólio. Então, gente, construa em casa o vídeo da segunda-feira, façam o experimento mandem para gente, manda para mim que eu mando para a Camila, a gente vê aí o que, que a gente vai conseguir de bolsa para vocês e não é porque vocês estão no segundo ano que ah, tem mais um ano aí para pensar, vocês podem já começar a se preparar não só a galera do segundo ano, mas a galerinha que está aí no nono ano também, melhor ainda porque já tem mais coisa para começar a trabalhar e pensar, tá bom? Obrigado, Camila. Obrigado por, por, por essa experiência maravilhosa. Thank you very much, professor. Thank you very much to, to join us in this week. It was an amazing experience. I'm glad, I'm glad you, expect, uh, you enjoyed it because I, uh, I really, really did. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. Um, amazing. Again, hopefully, hopefully we can do more in the future. Oh, definitely, way. definitely. This, I'm um, just going to say this program uh, is not going to stop. We are still going to mo do mock class. And if you want, professor, to propose another mock class, just let Camila know and then we can arrange another. Okay. Um, is anyone interested in computer science? Anyone interested in computer science at all? Actually, I kind of am. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm actually developing um, uh, another one, uh, basically another class like this, where you can build your own um, mobile application. So basically mm, a game that you can launch on your own Android device. So um, as soon as that's finished, I will let you know, and we can do that together. 
Amazing. That's fantastic, Professor. We, we're still Absolutely. going to do this. I'm just going to tell the students we won't stop. Uh, that's just the beginning. So, but thank you very much so far for this magic that happens every, happens every week. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. No problem. Galera, eu quero agradecer muito a presença de vocês. Só quero dizer que o Mock Class, como eu estava comentando aqui com o professor, não acabou. Tá? É, vocês vão receber, as escolas de vocês vão mandar para vocês e vocês por já estarem cadastrados também, vão ficar recebendo aí os futuros mock classes. Então, aí a gente já tem alguns é, encaminhados sobre administração, sobre vacina, vai ter um de culinária de uma escola de Paris. Vai, vamos torcer aí para o professor Kroll estar de novo com a gente, aí falando sobre ciência da computação, para ele ensinar a gente a desenvolver esses aplicativos de celular. Mas fiquem de olho que vocês ainda vão receber as próximas mock classes. Tá bom? Não, não acha que acabaram, porque não acabou. Quero convidar todos hoje, 6 horas da tarde, para assistir a, a uma live. Imagino que está todo mundo cansado de webinar de live, mas hoje é muito bacana, porque vamos falar aí das universidades da Alemanha, é, que a gente vai trazer ali as oportunidades. As universidades da Alemanha custam 150 euros, então vamos assistir junto com a gente. Não percam a oportunidade da Holanda. A Holanda, como a Camila falou, é uma excelente, um excelente destino. Vocês não precisam saber o holandês, o Dutch. Com o inglês vocês já conseguem viver, porque a Camila pode me corrigir, mas 99% ali da, da Holanda fala o inglês, então é super tranquilo para vocês. E, e é isso, galera. Eu quero agradecer a presença de todos e a gente se vê bem em breve, ok? Muito obrigado. Thank you. Obrigada. Thank you, Kron.